Right, anyway, I have the wonderful, the magnificent Billy Wood. Billy Wood, who has his own song these days. I do, yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask at the end, but let me talk about that song to begin with. Are you happy with it? Uh, no, to be honest, it, it, it's it's quite surreal. I actually really, I do like it. I do. Mm. I think it's a great song. Whoever, whoever come up with the lyrics, massive yeah. you know, kudos to them. I've got an idea who it was, uh, but yeah. I think... I think it's fantastic. Mm. It's actually quite catchy. I actually, mm. um, as arrogant as this sounds, Chris, <laughs> I've actually, ha I've actually um, had it in my head a few times and kind of like yeah. hummed it away to myself. But yeah, uh, yeah, a bit weird. But um, no, yeah, thank you. Like to the support of singing it, thank you. And hopefully, I can keep doing what I'm doing at the club to make you sing that throughout the next five, ten, fifteen years. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. all good. That's all good. Right. So first of all. Let's let's go to the where we're recording this. It's Friday today, isn't it? So it's it is. on Friday, it's just before this big announcement. This is obviously coming out on the Thursday afterwards. Yeah. So please, I'm hoping that the big announcement is a certain gentleman putting pen to paper. Would I be correct? Yeah, Gary Histed has just signed a three year deal. Yes, with love. Um, Histed and, Gary, and his will, harem. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, Gary will forever be um, at put the club helping out throughout the week and um, for the next three years. And I'm delighted with that deal. Oh. Uh, now, on a serious note, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's been the, it's been the most interesting deal I've had to do at the club. Mm. That includes the ones going out. Um, but yeah, we've, we've concluded um, the transfer. Um, the, the fee has been agreed um, and we have concluded the, the registration um, and move over from Folkestone to Hastings United of our new number four, Finn O'Mara. So yeah, he's a Finn gets it. Oh, Billy fine. gets it done. Billy gets it done. Yeah. Just... Well, it was a um, hard one. <laughs> well, I remember talking to Gary a few weeks back and he was saying, you know, and, and you know, there's a few messages as well, but yeah. he was saying that it's, that they had a valuation. Yeah. And it, obviously his contract's coming towards an end. Yeah. And we had a valuation and that they were playing hardball for someone that they didn't really want. Yeah, I agree. And, yeah, I mean, and so you've managed to bump a few heads and... Yeah, I, I think the fact of the matter is the players come in done fantastically well. So oh, blimey, yeah. So if I put, if I was Folkestone, let's just say, I probably would, even if my manager wasn't having him and, and not really playing him, the fact that he's doing so well at the football club is naturally going to put a, if the club badly want him, he's going to put a price on his head that yeah. we're going to have to pay. Um, and and with all due respect, I don't mind that if Finn's doing well and Finn has been fantastic, Blimey. not just on the pitch, but he's been brilliant off the pitch as well. And he really has brought into what the club's about and, and what we're trying to achieve. And I think, um, was I happy with the negotiations? Not 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 fully, <laughs> but I have to be honest. And I normally get what I want all the time when it comes to these sort of things in the sense that I'll make mm. sure that if we want something... I'm a big believer. If you want something in life, you can go out and get it. So yeah. when it comes to players in and out, we've always seemed to got what we want. And and we were always going to get Finn. And I, and I said it to a few few uh, supporters that like, don't yeah. worry, we'll get this done. But it was lastminute.com. Um, uh, a little bit of insight. At 7 p.m. last night, the lads went to start training. And the deal was rejected. And... I went in to the change room. Well, I spoke to Gary, mm. and then Gary went into the change room, and um, the lads went off to train. And Finn didn't. Finn didn't train, and he didn't train because the deal was off, and Finn was going back to Folkestone. Oh, blimey! And it was very touch and go, but within probably an hour, a couple of hours, you know, it was not just me. It was. It's combined effort. We had a bit of a good cop back cop situation with me and Dean White, as everyone knows. <laughs> and we, we we got the deal over the line. Brilliant stuff. Um, to bring Finn in, and and Finn has signed a, a lengthy contract with us, so he's not here just to the end of the year. He's here for for a couple of seasons at least. Excellent. And Excellent. Um, we're we're very excited to have him here. And it's quite funny actually because all the players went off the training right, and they all come back because they trained off site yesterday. Mm. Mm. it all came back and and Gary went into the change room and took Finn in there all somber I was like lads yeah. um, folks they're not playing ball um, mm. Finn's going back like we want to wish Finn all the best and thank him mm. for what he's done so they're all giving him applause oh, and fuck. pulling him off yeah and then like Gary like, tells everyone it's like no he's here for he's here for three more years oh, and, and the whole room went up and it's great so oh, excellent 
Um, no, we're, we're delighted, and I think he's he's going to play a big part in this football club's journey that we. Blimey, on. yeah, but but, but uh, Billy, I mean. Were you a little bit annoyed of him when he did that overhead kick? You think Christ, that's put his value up a little bit there. Well, yeah. Well, why do you think he didn't get man in the match? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, uh, it was it was one of those things. I think if we tried to buy Finn initially at the start, we probably would have not paid what we, we've paid. Um, it's an undisclosed fee, but we we we've we've, we've done good business. Or well, they've done good business. I think we've done good business because I think it's worth it. But we probably wouldn't have paid nowhere near that. He's done really, really well with us. He's um, he's probably pushed his own value up by playing so well, scoring goals as well. Not just overhead kits, but he's so threatening in the Absolutely. in the box. He's such a threat, and I think um, he, he's a sort of centre half that probably can get you ten goals a season, just because he's such a threat um, from corners and free kicks. So his value has gone up. But um, he's still still young. He's under twenty three. He's 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 got a journey to go on. You know, he was at he was in, at a football league club. He played he he played for Gillingham, hmm. um, and I'm sure he wants to play at the highest level we can possibly play. But he really likes it at Hastings. Like he genuinely feels like he's been here for a long time, um, and and part of part of the family as such. And it was never a case of agree the deal and then try to convince Finn to stay at Hastings. It was. I want to be at Hastings. Let's get a deal done. So mm. we're delighted. We're over the moon. And um, I'm not so bothered about the overhead kick now. I'm, I'm thinking we might put it up on social media later just to, just to show what we've got. But um, yeah. no, he, he's a class lad. And um, I'm really, really pleased he's, he's, a, he's a Hastings player for, for the, the long term. No, I mean, it's brilliant. I've got, you know, since the guy came in through the door from, from on the pitch, absolutely dominant that particularly as you say with the uh, aerial threat and the, the enthusiasm that he brings across and the energy just unreal yeah. I mean you could you, it looks like he's having fun out there as well yeah. you know and I think that has really bounced off a lot of the players definitely I agree Chris and I think you got only have to look at the goal celebrations not just of his goals but everyone's goals yeah. Finn's like one of the first people over there yeah. so he's he's really part of the squad the lads love him and um it's it's a good signing. It's a mm. signing that it shows that we're not messing around mm. and um, it, it's stability that we need. And him and Stoney are what a pair. And it's like, yeah. it's like Stoney Elphick part um, version two, if you know mm. what I mean. It really feels that way. And um, yeah, we're, we're absolutely delighted and it's great to have Finn at the club. Yeah, incredible. I mean, did you know, just, just sorry to keep going on about Finn That's here, but right. like the... Did you know as soon as he walked through that door, like we've we've got a player here? I mean, no, no, like... no. Um, I think um, look, Gary Elphick as a player was, I would say Gary Elphick as a player before he became manager was probably the most. And this is no knock on any other player at the football club because mm. I think everyone's mad. look. You can see how much people love the players that we've got here, mm. or that all were here, like your Daniel Adjukais and and your Lamb Rays and Jake Elliott's and what have you. But I think probably in the time I've been at the club and maybe like the season before when he came in, Gary Elphick probably as a player was the most important player for us to win games of football. Mm -hmm. um, he was, it was always the conversation was like, as long as we've got Gary out on the pitch, we'll be okay. That was a lot of the conversations that would, would, would be had at the club. So Gary, when, when, I, when I spoke to Gary about becoming manager and it was obvious that he would be a manager not a player manager when we, we made I think we made a decision after Cray it was Cray we made a decision at and it was like look this is what we're going to do and it was like right we've got to replace Gary and you go oh how are you going to find a kick it head it yeah proper diehard proper old school center half at this point of the season that's not already yeah. contracted at a club um, or, or doing well at a club and they, they don't want to leave. And so names got thrown around, lots of names got thrown around, mm. um, some really cultured defenders and a few others. Uh, and then Finn come in and, like, I would say the first game at Free Bridges, I think it was Free Bridges was his first game, I'm sure it was, mm. where, we, where, where him and Stoney collided <laughs> and they went, they went through and Stoney <laughs> made that big, that big tackle. I thought to myself, it looks threatening. He looks decent, but 
is he going to be enough yeah. to replace Gary Elphick? But from that moment, every single game has gone past. He's got better and better and more comfortable, knows his job. Um, I think being being with Stoney, him and Stoney have gelled incredibly well. It's, it's lovely to see. I think you only have to look at the end of games, how they they celebrate together before yeah. anything else. And and also being you know, Gary's Gary's one of the best centre backs at this level, level above, where, you know, and, and then some he's one of the best non league centre halves. Being around Gary Elf, it's only gonna make Finn better yeah. anyway. And I think we've got a player who's not for, like Gary's in his mid thirties now, Finn's in his early twenties. We've yeah. got, we've got someone that potentially could end up playing four hundred games for Hanson United. I mm-hmm. genuinely believe that and I'm excited that he's joined the club permanently. Nice. nice. It's brilliant stuff. And you mentioned, um, obviously, Craig Stone. Uh, yeah. Do you remember when he's got that? Okay, you see Craig Stone grab his up. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. I mean, it's yeah. just, it rubs off, you know, it's just. Well, well Stoney left training last night, um, left after training last night before he, everyone found out it was a joke that was Finn was staying. So mm. he probably went home really pissed off <laughs> in, in the car thinking, Who's playing next? Who's playing alongside me on Saturday? But um, yeah, it, it's all done, and he's got he's got his pal Finn next to him, so it's all good. Excellent, excellent, great business there from you. Great business, well done. Um, j- well, moving on, let's move on to. We we'll talk about well, we had the Q and A last week. Yeah, um, the the time kiln was brought up again. Yeah, could I please ask, where are we at with that? Um, this is obviously dragging on, and no one wants it to drag on. So what's the latest with this situation? Well, the latest is simple and it is, it is frustrating for me. Um, I, w- I got a phone call. I won't say who from, but someone at the council who's been mm. part of the process calls me up and said, well, actually, no, not didn't call me up. She was at the ground, at our ground on a Sunday, mm. said to me, you've made the 8th, 8th of December meeting. Like, I've got a presenting. I'm, I'm glad that you are, you, you've made the meeting and it's going up unopposed. And I was, I, I, I kind of, I got really excited and I kind of, um, I, no, I've not cried, but knowing that you get that moment, you God, mm. like, we're actually going to, we're actually going to be heard. So I kind of, I got really kind of emotional when I found that news out. So I wanted to share it with you guys because it's your club, right? So mm. if I can get emotional about something like that, I wanted to share it out. And I had it on good authority that we were going to get heard. Long story short, it comes to the close to the meeting and they say that our ecology report yeah. wasn't, wasn't what they wanted and they, they wanted some changes to it. And okay. at lastminute.com, we, we offered to make the changes, it, but they said it wouldn't be quick enough to get it done for... The, um, the planning meeting for the 8th, and we'll be pushed back. Um, since that, we didn't make January, and um, I'm hoping that we make the February or March one. Now, my biggest concern, and the concern of Darren and Peter, is that we know what happens in May. It's, it's councillor, um, you know, it's, it's, it's elections, right? So everything goes into Purdue and no, nothing gets done. Now, I'm not cynical when it comes to the council. Others will be. And, and I'm sure Darren and Peter have kind of had a, an, enough of the journey. Like It's been longer than I've been here. It's been mm. since they walked through the door. They're probably fed up, really, really fed up. But I'm fed up, Chris. And I'm fed up with there's always a reason to push it back. Um, and I'm hoping the council proved me wrong a little bit and we get heard before, before elections. I don't think there's any reason for us not to be heard now. It was meant to be going up on the post. Honestly, though, Billy, like in terms of like you, you've obviously put this new report in, yeah. yeah. And, and have they ratified? They've said, okay, that's fine. And we now I'm, have to hear it. Is it? Is that the case? Is that they? Well, that, then... should be the, that should be the case. So why? Why are they waiting? I mean, I'm I'm not a massive fan of the council, mate. Yeah. So, it why it should take this long for them to just sit down and you know either review something and say yeah. well we don't like it or we do like it i mean i don't because yeah, no, no. it's, um, it's, it's not fair to leave everyone i think it's frustrating because the longer it's left the more expensive it costs to make this new ground right regardless if you've got plan and approval or not and i think that's a, a worry for for us all at the club but also i just don't get what i i don't get is i find us as a club scrambling for facilities so how 
how is everyone else getting on in, in this mm. town? You know, where there are no facilities. I'm sick to death with hearing about uh, the, the, the town trying like, doing stuff because it doesn't. It's it, in my time of living here, I reckon things have got worse facility wise, and that's a shame. And it's and it's by the way, it's not no knock on any individual in in a council led position or anyone that's made these decisions because obviously everyone wants what's best I'm, I'm, I'm not cynical enough to think that people are trying to make this place worse because like, they've tried things like they tried the pier um they tried the new cricket ground which ended up being a bit of a white elephant and i think so the town gets scared yeah in, in my opinion of, of of big projects so you've got to look at the the cricket ground You've got to, what happened there with, with, with being a bit of a white elephant. You have to look at um, other like the pier. Let's let's be honest; it's been a bit of a nightmare situation that. And I think, but, yeah, but that's giving money. Like let's talk about the pier now. Yeah. yeah, the pier was giving money to individuals. Yeah, and and no real accountability. Exactly, no, and no. and whereas the, the, this is all in front of them. That you're you you're the guys that are, are putting this project forward. There's obviously you know, but David Burney and everyone that there, you know, this is yeah. not people that are shysters. So like, I mean, I don't. Well, I think the difference is, I think there's a lot of stipulations on the new ground, like what we've got to, what we can't do, what we can do, you know, what toilet paper we can use at the ground, and like <laughs> some of the some of the conditions are a little bit silly, but we understand that that there are concerns that it's. Some people believe that it's just going to be a thing that makes Hastings United loads and loads of money, right? With all, all due respect, anyone who runs a football club knows that football clubs just don't generate loads without spending loads. And it's not going to make anyone rich, but it will enrich this town, you know, with the facilities. And my feeling on it is simple. Hastings United being successful is, is, is huge for Hastings. Now, we're on the map now, Hastings United. We are a big club. We get over a 1,000 people watching on average. We broke our all-time league attendance record, which stood from a game that was mostly attended by AFC Wimbledon supporters. That shows who we are in this town now, right? That badge on your hat, Chris is everywhere in this town and you can't get away from it and you can't get away from what we're trying to do. And we are, in my opinion, one of the most valuable assets to Hastings as a town because we're creating something of excitement. We're creating something where kids want to be, not just young boys, young girls. Young girls yeah. we're, we're creating a, a, an environment where teenagers on a Saturday have something to do. They have something to be part of. You can only have to look behind the goal now on match days and see the the vast amount of of teenagers that have accompanied yourself George um Joe and the gang behind there it's grown hugely and that's something we should be proud of as a town and even for example terrible terrible weather everyone social media didn't really make it look like the game was going to be on on Saturday let's be honest it could have some you know some tweets could have deterred people from coming up we still had 901 people there. Yeah. 901 people, which for me isn't one of our best attendances, but for Hastings United, right, it's massive, really. Mm. If, if, if I, when I first come to the club, we recorded highest attendances of the season at 505, and I think we went up to 700, and then 800, and then suddenly we had that 1,000 plus for, for Asher. We had like 1,020 or something like that. And... I was blown away, but 901 now, I'm not blown away by it. I'm still very proud of the fact that we got we had 900 people there, but it just shows that's a base level for us now. That's yeah. hardcore. If you're coming out in the rain, that's hardcore. And I think we now can really be a value to this town and we will op openly be a value, a value for this town by doing stuff for this town. So um, I'm a little bit, frustrated but I'm, i will never give up like even finn it was the, the deal was finished at 7 p.m we got the deal done at nine so never say never and we'll make this ground happen because it has to happen for this club or as a club we've got to think on our feet and and be ready i was going to, to ask you if there was a plan b if they're going to if it's going to go on forever and you've got to um, move to a plan well, b 
plan B ultimately, um, we we operate at the pilot field. That's our ground. We have a long lease on it. Um, it's funny because the residents don't want houses on there, but they don't want us there. Really, they might say that the non-footballing ones might say, "Oh, you know, save the pilot field. It's this great old stadium and what have you." And it is, but they don't want the car. We're big. You've got two thousand people mm. there. You can't park your car anywhere around there. It's who gets the complaints from that? Us. So, I plan B. Well, we're, we're at the pilot field, and Darren, Peter, and I will not stand still with this football club. Mm. Um, even if other people want to try and make us stand still, we're not going to stand still. So, uh, plan B is to keep on the move. Okay. Yeah. No, I understand. I, I would love to go in further detail, but I can't. But we'll keep on the move as such. I would say just we touched upon um, before was in terms of just to explain to people because if if the ground goes through, let's hope it does. Yep. The, we've got a certain attendance at the moment, which I think is about just two thousand, isn't it? Yeah, one thousand nine hundred and seventy-five. I think was the was the one for the new stadium, which um, was set obviously before I came to the club, and at, at that time the club was getting three four hundred people on average, so it was more than big enough. For, for, the, for the club's ambitions at that time. Yeah, so to, just to explain to yeah. people that maybe weren't at the Q&A, because you did go into it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. The, the actual, what, what would be done to increase that, considering the fact that that's yeah. not well, enough? For, no, well, yeah. look, if we're carrying on down this route, we, we want, like, the ambitions of the club are now, let's, let's be frank, we want to be a National League football club as mm. a bare minimum. And then... Then it's a real frank conversation with Darren and Peter about us free, making sure that this club potentially becomes a, a football league club. That's mm. the dream, right? Yeah. It still will take time to get there. But 1,975 people don't get you there. It just doesn't. And I think we've now shown with excitement and, and a little bit of um, community spirit that if, if if we give the town something to, to want to be part of, then they're going to come and be part of it. So with regards to the capacities, there's is scaled so the ground scaled and the way it we built is scaled that it can kind of have extra put onto it so whether that's one nine seven five to three and a half to five thousand to ten thousand to fifteen thousand now we're not stupid there's no point just getting approval and being stuck at two thousand because actually you can't be a national league club at that level either yeah. so there's stipulations and um for example, there's like not clauses. I think it's the wrong word to use, but there's 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 points in that that say what we can and can't do to increase. And we know from our end, we want to increase, and we understand that if it gets to the point we want to get to by the time we get a new ground, one nine seven five is not enough. Yeah, just as simple as that. Oh, okay. All right. And so, um, so in terms of the that's not going to be any hold up. That isn't the hold up. That no, that's not anything not the to hold do up. with it. That's not the hold up. The hold up is simple. Is this ecology report, and it's and 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 on like on that report, what they want done is a is a actual uh, a law that's not even come in yet. It, it might come in in twenty twenty three. So we're doing a report that's going to be valid valid for after twenty twenty three when you shouldn't really have to, but we are. Oh, it's, right. like saying, it's like saying a law's going to come into in next year that it's like the smoking smoking in restaurants and pubs thing you knew that at a certain date could be done so you people did it beforehand anyway oh no you can't do that because in six months time you're not allowed to do it here it's like that a little bit which is yeah. a bit weird must ask you what's it like coming into work every day since yeah. i last spoke to you yeah a lot has happened yeah? yes yes and we've had a night a lovely old turnaround What's it, just just give me a, just what's it like work at walking in that door now? I mean, every day it's great. I, yeah. I, I, st- I love it anyway. I love it every day going there. Like it's it's a dream come true to to kind of be the guy spearheading the Hastings United Football Club. I think I'm sure Gary will, will attest to this that when we had a little sticky patch after the Chris left and and we lost to Cray and then we lost to Hayes Heath. I was very much a look marathon, not sprint. Mm. So many points to win. We'll be all right. We'll we'll we'll, we'll get we'll, what what you need. We'll give you. We'll make sure we get there. What is it like for me? It's two ways, Chris. Like it's 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 amazing, mm. but by God, it is stressful. 
Um, I don't really show that on match days apart from me celebrating and agonising. But it is stressful because ultimately it's a business as well. And there's times when we're stretched and there's times that we're not. And if it wasn't for some of our great sponsors and if it wasn't for the supporters turning up and coming through the gate and the big crowds outside, and I'm, look, I'm sorry that we've got queues now at this football club and we've changed our procedure, procedures around the, the entry in to make it a bit more professional because it was a little bit of a free for all how you got into the crowd, people got into the ground. If it isn't for gate revenue and match day revenue and, and sponsors and look, for example, the women's team are doing well, not because of me or, or, or some of the players like individually, that we're doing well because Hastings Venture Golf, for example, are, are, are a huge sponsor and have really helped us be able to do what we want to do this year. And and little, like 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 Littlewoods and CB Electrical, who poor Craig, uh, we bother him every day about electrics. And you know, he, I know he's a he's a um, a director, but it's still, we, if it wasn't for for that, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. So on the business side, um, I'm very very fortunate that Darren and Peter entrust me with the vision and, and what we want to do and and back my decisions, whether they're, they're, they're right or wrong, they back me 100%. And not many clubs would you have that, that level of um, trust and decision-making, really. A lot of the time, you probably have people meddling in what you do. Those guys don't meddle at all. They, they let me crack on. They're, they're the ones on Trust Me on Saturdays and Tuesday nights. Mm. Other ones text me as soon as the goal goes in, and and if we score, they score. How are we getting on? How are we doing? And also, they're, they're attending more and more games, and I think than than they really have done throughout their tenure now because it's it's a welcoming place, and I think people see Peter and Darren home and away a little bit more than than usual, and and I like that. I like them being there because this is our club together. When I say our, I don't just mean. Darren Peter and myself yeah. I mean the, the supporters the players the staff the, the volunteers we're, we're all together there's no there's no there's no like, like you know I I would tell there's no like I'm not sitting out out the way and and not part of it like I can have a have a beer and a laugh and a joke with anyone and be part of it we're all we're all part of the same team and I and I like that and I don't like divide I don't like um what I, you know you might I'm, I am your chair, the chairman of your football club, but yeah. I don't like that divide of people can't have a chat with me mm. or have a laugh with me or even take the piss out of me. I, I like it, you know, like when, like when, when. Um, You'd expect it back as well, yeah, Billy. Yeah, of course, of course, but I, I like that. And I think that's the way it should be. Like, I, I'm not untouchable. Like, I'm one of you. And, mm. and and we're all in it together. And we all, on a Saturday, go to a game with the same buzz and excitement that we want to get three points. And that's the way this club is. It's passionate, but but we have to, on the business side, be a little bit more, um, not cautious. I think we're not a cautious club, but we have to be mindful and we have to budget well and we have to make sure. And we, we have to, we take gambles. We take like educated gambles in, in what we think we can do. And sometimes they come off, sometimes they don't. But, but we've always got backups for, for things that don't go well. And we always make sure that we're financially secure. Um, but like any non-league club, we're not, we're not multi-millionaire yeah. football club. We are a club that sometimes has to operate month to month. And then sometimes we're a little bit more fluid and it's just the way of the business. But for example, season ticket uptake massively helped. And I really hope next year we, we, we break the record again. And I hope that happens. Does that hit us in the pocket a little bit on ma individual match days? Yes. But the commitment to have people in the ground, I think is the reason why we're getting a big crowd. So I love it, Chris, going back to the original question. Mm. I absolutely love it. And I wouldn't change this opportunity for anything because I, I want success for this town, both men and women. And, mm. and um, that's why I'm, I'm heavily, not just heavily involved in the men's side in the sense of behind the scenes, but, but the women's has been a. As well, everyone that's what I was going to come to about 
obviously your role as the manager of yeah. the women's team doing fantastic. Yeah. I mean, you never, we never really get you on here talking about that, but I want you to, do, oh, no. if you've got time, if you just yeah, got cool. time, yeah. but yeah, yeah. so you were, so the, the, the women's team is doing fantastic. Yeah. What's the secret? Come on. What, 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 all right. Yes. You've got, you've got some good players there. Yeah. You know, Blair and goal, Rebecca, this, yeah. Georgia Tibble, every, you know, got some good players out there. But what, how have you brought this I, bunch I think, together and made them a, a winning outfit so quickly? I, I think the the trick is like the quality in the team is is fantastic. There's no denying the quality uh, across the squad. Not just like eleven players. I'm talking eighteen, nineteen, mm. very very good players. Um, some from a, from a higher leagues that have come down. I think the secret of the success of it has been everyone's pulling in the right direction. Everyone wants the same thing. And I think they've all brought in to the, the ethos of what we're trying to achieve with women's football at the club. I think they understand that I'm, I'm passionate, but I'm not going to ever ask anything from them that I wouldn't do myself. So I'm really pushed. Like we might win a game five nil, but that doesn't mean anything for me if we don't play well. And a lot of other places, if you win five nil, you won five nil. Yeah, great. Crack up and bottle of champagne and move on. And I'm a little bit hard on the girls like that because I understand that there's going to be games where the team that we play is going to be nowhere near the quality of us, mm. and it's going to be an easy an easy game and we don't walk in by the way we don't walk into any games to think it's going to be easy like walking casuals at the weekend um beat Dorking wanderers who are top of their league at the same step as us they beat them 4-2 and i was expecting a tough game we, you know, we went there one five nil and we didn't play well i don't think anyway i don't think we played well and i wasn't very happy with the performance and and i won't ever I'm not negative, so I'm not going after a 5 0 hammer the girls, but uh, you know, training, it's simple. It's look, we're a passing football team. We've got technically the best players around. Why, why are we just going back? Why are we going for 50? Yeah, why are we being brought down yeah. to their level? Rubbish. Mm. And we need to do what we do best mm. look after the ball, be patient with the ball, and, and, and play football the right way and, and play the way we want to play. And we, and we push on to them. And the good thing is that our players have adapted to the way we want to play very quickly. It does help when you're bringing in very, very good players. Like for example, Claire, Claire Johnson, CJ has been, she's been the, I would say she's the, she's the, 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 the pace setter of the team yeah. in the sense that she's the one of the hardest working I've ever come across. Uh, she's inspirational. She's like, you know, she's a mother to, to two, you know, she's, She's hard working off the pitch as she is on the pitch. She never ever moans. She she gets on with every, every situation. She came in wanting to play right back. Has <laughs> so now played right back, right wing, um, as a number ten. Uh, she's that good. She can play anywhere, and she she really really is enjoying her football. And I think she's set the standards a little bit at the club. Now we've got other players of just as good quality, like Georgia Tibble. I don't think you'll find a better a better technically gifted player at our level than, than Tibbs and Sean Hevers on just, well, you know, any, anyone who's seen Sean play, she's, she's rapid, loads of pace, scores goals for fun as well. And you add that to players like Mia Highland coming in. And for example, another one, unfortunately got injured at the weekend, but Vix, hmm. Vix Phillips, the centre half has been like, in, like she's been unreal. She's come in, back end of her career, really, come back off an ACL, come in, and I expected Vix to be a bit part player. And she's the she, alongside Re and Rebecca Ralph, as the only two that have started every single game this season. She, you know, she's that important to us. So losing her is going to be massive. How, how long is she out for the season? Or... We don't know yet. Don't know we don't yet. know. It, it, it could be a while. It's Thankfully, it's, it's not broke it, but it looks like serious ligament mm. damage. So it could be a while and and, and we'll we have to manage without her. But that's the depth of the squad. We've got Rosie Muggeridge who can just step straight in and Lucy Fletcher can play centre-half as well. So the trick has been, I think, it's just been managing personalities as well. Like, they know what I'm yeah. about. They know, they know that I want success and I'm passionate about it. And I think as long as I carry on showing them that, 
then then hopefully they carry on running through brick walls for for this football club. And we so far so good. But yeah, no, I'm delighted. The staff, the players, everyone's done done amazing. But also as a club, we backed that as well, and we made sure that every every player coming in feels like they're coming into a professional situation. So I'm I'm really I'm really happy with how that's going, Chris. Really happy. Yeah, well, you know, it's great. It's a great time to be a Hastings yeah. fan. Um, you'll you'll be at which the I take it, sir? Oh, of course, of course, I'll be there. Yeah, cool. without a doubt. Well, I shall see you at that game. Um, yeah. Uh, but before you go, any any message to the Hastings fans or anything you want to just just keep them? what you're doing. Keep what you're doing. Look, the crowds are getting bigger, which in some senses it might take away from the atmosphere a little bit because they might not all know the songs and, and what we do. But on the hardcore support, We'll tell them the Billy Wood song. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, of yeah. course. We'll, yeah, we'll make sure they know that one. All right? Uh, yeah, we'll you can tell them, Billy. You can yeah, tell I'll them. Yeah, sing, I'll sing it for yeah. them. But, uh, but with, with regards to, to, to the hardcore supporters, you know, not just the ones behind the guard, but in the main stand, yeah. who, by the way, the positivity when Cissé and, and, and Nori came off the pitch was, was ridiculous, wasn't it? Like that noise... I've never heard that for a sub for, for a sub ever at the ground since I've been there. But you guys are the ones that are gonna, once they're in the stadium, they're gonna gravitate towards either sitting up in the stand, watching the game quietly, or being behind the goal. And I think for me, from at home, we've got to continue being nice and loud and proud. But away from home, let's be in unity. Let's let's make that noise, that 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 wall behind the goal ridiculous let's 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 not call people out for not singing i'm not saying that but in the side but the it does happen it. it does happen occasionally yeah, but, Go on. but the lads love it like yeah. the away support is what gets talked about a lot is everyone traveling away to support hastings united is massive and and it's stuff like that that, that will be so vital when it's running like whitstable on saturday it, it could be a, a banana skin mm. but when you've got That's you me. guys there with the with the drum Jules banging the drum away. You're all singing. I'm sure Robbie will be, in, be on crouches this weekend after last week. But you're all singing, you know, bellowing out of tune, sing, willing the lads on. That, for, for me, watching, watching the game mm. and hearing you guys gives me so much joy and pride and joy that please do it more. Because it, for me, that's when I talk, talk about Hastings, that's what I talk about to people mm. is the supporters. Because without the support and without the the love of the club. Genuinely, I don't think I could do what I do. So that rubs off on me massively. So so I appreciate it hugely. Cheers. Thanks. Thank, thanks so much for that. And thanks so much for this, Billy. Um, well done. Fantastic business. Getting thin in. You're doing great guns with the women's team. Men's team doing fantastic. I mean, yeah. What's not to love? Exactly. It's Hastings. It's Hastings, mate. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank right, you, mate. Cheers, mate. <laughs>